How long did it take you to build up that 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 skill? And why is that lacking in reggae music? Because there's no showmanship. That's the, one of the biggest problems in reggae right now. There's no showmanship in the performance. Very good question. Again, reading. <laughs> Shall I say something called research? When you check a man named Bob Marley, you remember that man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A man named Toots and the Matels. Oh, they know how to work a stage. Yo. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so you went and studied the superstar. You went and studied a man named Admiral Bailey, sir. Yeah. A man named Lieutenant Stitchy, sir. Original. A yeah, man yeah. named Shabarank, sir. Yeah. A man named Ninja Man, sir. <laughs> a man named Tiger, sir. So you find that you go and study our greats. Go and study the best that did it. And if you, did, if you find and you study the greats, then you'll find out how you're supposed to present yourself. Then you went and study another genre. Yeah. Let us go again, sir. Yeah. Shirley Caesar, yeah. Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, yeah. Elvis Presley, The Beatles. Study. And then you find that you study all these components. You must find yourself out of that. And my brother Peter is when I went and did my solo projects and started to tour with different artists from John Legend, India, Ari, Tara Riley, Buja Bantan, Dewey and Stevenson. And then I came back to our day job because that was an experiment <laughs> that my father had a dream that he wanted to see all of us do solo projects. Yeah. And in 2007, we said, it's time. Oh, so that was, that was more kind of your father type? Yeah, my father responsible. Yeah. That, my father yeah. put that in my head. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, never yeah. want to do that at all. The first time he mentioned that in 99 in Paris yeah. was Marguerite and Buja Banton at um, the Zenith yeah. on a reggae festival. And we was reasoning. And the show was so amazing. He said, this band need to do some solo projects one day. And we said, hey, daddy, how are you talking about? Yeah. Bond that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and eventually, when you reach a certain height, you have to challenge yourself and say, what's next? Yeah. So... Throughout the journey, when I went and experienced all of that, I realized how dangerous my brother Peter was. I've never seen nobody work an audience like my brother Peter. I know how to work it, you know. He, he is you know, truly like, incredible. You know, seriously. There's no one like him. And I experienced that when I was the opening act for Buju Bantan and only had to perform for 30 minutes. Yeah. 30 minutes I performed yeah, for. And I was losing day. my voice and <laughs> couldn't focus on the crowd to Buju one day come and said to me, say, you're too stiff on stage, man. I was like, wait a minute. I thought you were my friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but he told me the truth. And eventually I started to learn. And that's what made Morgan Heritage was able to come back after five years yeah. and still come back and be better. I can see how that's worse. a transition because you buy the piano and you have your pieces here. And yeah, it was, a ha it was hard. Thing, I never know how to work the front of a stage. Yeah. So I had to study. But my brother Peter was a master. I've, we've been in front of crowds. I've seen Peter swell a crowd from about 150 people. It was a big place in Poland. It's on, you can YouTube this, called, um, wait, name? I soon tell you the name, but it's Google Morgan, Gramps Morgan, Peter Morgan, Poland. The crowd was a big, big open space. And it, when we went on stage, nobody knew who we were. It was a rock festival. So the people just gone, but then people was gone, go jumping on mud, and I see people are running on mud, mud like pigs, human beings. I mean, I said, these are humans rolling in the mud like that. So it was just an amazing thing to see. And when we got on stage, nobody knew us. So everybody gone, go eat cotton candy and all kind of things, and, and kebabs and all these things. And when we went on stage, start and strike up and start playing. And then the music started pulling people. It went from about 150 people to 330 odd thousand people. Yeah. You hear me tell you? Yeah. And that was us on our solo tour. Yeah. And my brother Peter worked in the front line till. Let me tell you something. So where you get that from? Where you get that skill from? It's, sure? it's research, brother. Yeah. And that's one of the problems within the music today that a lot of artists don't research. They get one song playing on the radio and they're ready to tour.